It is when you travel to Lothal just after the monsoons that you get a glimpse of what this site would have been like 4000 years ago. Around 80 kilometers southwest of Ahmedabad, almost parallel to the Sabarmati river that flows down into the Gulf of Cambay and the Arabian Sea, Lothal is even today surrounded by low-lying areas and old channels of rivers. This has always been a watery world where ships from Sindh and as far as Mesopotamia and the Red Sea would have come and docked. This bustling port town, perhaps the oldest in the world, would have been a center of commerce. But this water, which was a lifeline of Lothal, was also its curse. In this film, we look at how Lothal would have fitted in in the Harappan world, how it would have been in its prime, and what happened to it, which is clearly visible even today thanks to the latest satellite imagery and small shrines that dot the region. In the Harappan world, the town of Lothal played an important role. While it wasn't as large as the other great cities of the Harappans, Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, Rakhigarhi, Kalibangan or Dholavira, Lothal was significant. Archaeologist Dr. Vasant Shinde, who is today studying ancient DNA at the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad, is an expert on the Harappan world and has worked on sites across the Indian subcontinent. He takes us on a journey through Lothal. Lothal, you know, among all the Harappan sites, Lothal stands out clearly because this is the site now where we have excavated the world's earliest dockyard. And that is most significant because that indicates that perhaps the Indians, when I say Harappans, they are the Indians, were the pioneers in developing these type of facilities in the country. And uh, you know, they were the pioneers in shipbuilding activity also. They have undertaken the maritime contacts, maritime trade and uh, they realized that, you know, unless we undertake the maritime trade, perhaps, you know, they will not be able to generate lot of wealth. They have used this wealth for developing the urbanization in this particular period and, uh, you know, that is the significance of the site. And the structure that is excavated, I think that is really unique structure. You have seen the structure, you know, this is a huge rectangular structure, which is roughly 240 meter long, 36 meter wide, 4 meter deep. And the interesting part of this structure is that the bricks, burnt bricks, they are set in bitumen and bitumen is, you know, is a waterproof substance. So, that means, you know, always, you know, is stored water and subsequent research carried out by NIO, you know, particularly by uh, Dr. Raju Nigam. Now, he also found some, you know, mar marine cells inside and also anchor stones inside. So, that has established the function of this particular structure. And this was the first site, you know, which established the maritime contact with outside world. In 1955, when S. R. Rao started the work, he also recovered some seals from the site. And these seals were from the, you know, from the Persian Gulf region. So, for the first time, archaeologists came to know or they could get some idea that Harappans had actually contact with outside world. So, that is the beginning of that and then of course, subsequent research carried out at Dholavira, Kuntasi. There are number of sites on the Makran coast, nearly 32 sites on Makran coast, which have been identified as Harappan ports. So, all these have now, you know, pro have provided sufficient evidence to indicate that the Harappans had very flourishing trade outside the Indian subcontinent. So, from that point of view, this site is very important. And as far as the Mesopotamia is concerned, I think there are a couple of sites now which have been identified as you know the ports of the contemporary period, but they also have very strong evidence in the form of literature. In the literature, because you know Mesopotamian history starts from 3000 BC, you know they have the written records which have been deciphered. And there is a mention about you know the uh, trade of the Mesopotamians with the Melua, you know, Magan region. So, the Magan, Melua, you know, they have been identified now properly. 
So, Meloa is particularly is the Harappan region. Now, this has been identified as Harappan region on account of number of things like they have given the orientation, the location of this particular region and secondly, you know, there is a th the text has mentioned about what things were imported from Melua. So, most of the things which are found in Indian subcontinent like ivory for example, or the articles made of red stone that is carnelian. So, the sources of that are only in the Indian subcontinent. So, these articles were imported by the you know by the Mesopotamian people. So, on the basis of that you know Melua has been identified as the Harappan region. The site of Lothal was discovered and excavated by Dr. S. R. Rao in the 1950s. This is the Google Earth map of the site as it is today. Technology allows us to zoom out and get a bird's eye view of the site and also understand the terrain it is in. In the case of Lothal, you find interesting facets. Today, it is sandwiched between two salt wastes the little run of Kutch and the Gulf of Kambe. 4,000 years ago, when the port of Lothal was at its height, the picture would have looked very different. The sea would have been much closer to the site. Today, it's about 20 kilometers away and there would have been river channels close by, offshoots of the Bhogava River that once flowed strong. Along with the Sabarmati, which could have been nearer. These channels would have acted as critical networks for this riverine port, allowing an easy getaway to the sea. See, Lothal is basically a river and port because you know Gulf of Khambat region, you know it is uh, very difficult to find natural ports because the sea is very shallow here and secondly you know it is very violent here. So, there are only maybe you know couple of places you know where they could you know develop this type of facilities and therefore, the Harappans have preferred to build you know the uh, the ports on the river you know which were meeting the you know Arabian sea. So, Lothal is one uh, you know has a very unique position because you know it is roughly for 20 kilometers away from the sea and you know that you know during the Harappan times the sea level was quite high maybe around 1900 BC the sea level has gone down and you know it is at, at this you know at the present position. So, naturally you know this the water sea water was coming very close to the site and they found that you know perhaps you know you know this is the ideal location for establishing a port and therefore, you know they have established the port there and you know the area around of course, the site where it is located there you know you can see the elevated portion it is slightly you know elevation, but otherwise the, the landscape around the site is very flat and uh, you know there you know the sea water must have spread, but the main function of the site was to you know have a port there. So, they have used this uh, you know this port quite you know nicely and uh, perhaps the ships were plying during the uh, tidal high tidal period the ships were coming in fact during the high tidal period and when the water started residing uh, perhaps the ships have gone back. So, this is how the you know the uh, the port must have worked, but you know what is interesting here the main function of Lothal was the dockyard where the ships were made and repaired. So, that part is very important and you know because it is uh, located al along the Saurashtra coast it could have covered the you know entire uh, span of the you know Saurashtra coast and could have covered number of small ports like Kuntashi for example. So, Kuntashi also could have, could have been connected to sites like Lothal. So, there may be number of other sites uh, where there could have been small ports, but perhaps Lothal because of its ideal location must have played very important role key role in both in part in ship building as well as undertaking the maritime trade. To understand how Lothal evolved, you have to look at it in the context of the region it is in, Saurashtra and beyond. In the 1950s, detailed excavations helped unearth a busy network of Harappan sites in Saurashtra. These ranged from rural townships to regional industrial hubs 
and ports like Lothal that sent out the produce, especially carnelian and cotton grown in this black soil rich region to the wider world. Saurashtra has uh, you know different categories of the site. In fact, uh, Professor Gregory Posel from University of Pennsylvania, he carried out very extensive field work in this region and he had discovered nearly 450 sites in Saurashtra itself. And majority of the sites are you know are agriculture sites here because Saurashtra has you know very good agricultural land. And you know that Harappans have intentionally selected two different ecological zones. One is the you know the allium zone in Saraswati and Indus region and the other one was the black cotton soil zone. So, Saurashtra has the black cotton soil, even Rajasthan has the black cotton soil and the objective behind selecting these two different ecological zone was that if one zone fails you know if the, if the agriculture in one zone fails they have another zone it might you know which can support. So, that was the main objective of the Harappans to select this you know different zones. So, initially it was thought that you know the Harappans came to Saurashtra from Sindh region and in search of maybe raw materials. Saurashtra is you know there are you know a lot of you know uh, sources of raw material available, but also Saurashtra is close to the you know source of other raw, raw materials. There are some raw materials on the border of Gujarat and Maharashtra, some raw materials on, on the border of Gujarat and Rajasthan. So, they could easily access these sources also. So, initially it was thought that you know people came here for in search of the you know raw materials, but when Posil carried out the research, we noticed that you know most of the small sites we can call them as small agriculture villages, they are in the proximity of black cotton soil. That means, they have exploited the black cotton soil for agriculture purpose. So, there are you know number of sites you know, which can be identified as the agriculture sites, there are number of sites you know, which could be identified as the manufacturing centers. Like for example, even Lothal has some manufacturing activity also, bead man manufacturing was one of the important activities at Lothal and Lothal perhaps was the main may be regional center in Saurashtra. In 2200 BCE, over 4000 years ago, the coastline of Saurashtra would have been very different and there would have been a busy network of water channels. Today, it is a different picture with centuries of silting that has changed the topography. When you look at the satellite imagery photographs, it clearly indicates that there are a number of small rivers around Lothal. So, you know Bhogavi is not the only river which was present during the Harappan times. Perhaps there were a number of small tributaries also you know which were connecting this Bhogavi river. And you know maybe after you know 2000 BC when the sea level has gone down, most of the rivers must have started silting you know maybe you know uh, silting up. And that silting process must have happened <coughs> for, for a long period. And you know clearly when we go around the site and we do the some you know some kind of catchment studies, we can clearly make out that you know there is a lot of huge silting up uh, which has come up after the desert, desertion of this particular site maybe around after 2000 BC. So, that process happens continuously and there is one professor from MS University professor Meher who has uh, carried out very scientific studies in this respect. And he also has uh, substantiated, you know, these views. He was also of the opinion that, uh, you know, this there was maybe network of these small rivers around the site of Lothal. And after 2000 BC, these rivers have silted up, and perhaps you know that they must have fallen into disuse after some times. So that evidence is very clear, and now it is uh, properly established by uh, the satellite imagery photography. So, it is quite clear now. This is an artist's reconstruction of what Lothal may have looked like around 2200 BCE. What we see of the site today that has been excavated is just one third of the actual town. A lot remains buried under this mount, but there has been a lot also lost after a series of floods caused by strong tidal waves between 2000 and 1900 BCE. Archaeologist S. R. Rao's excavation report on Lothal helps us understand the port town and also what happened to it. 
The most exciting discovery in the site was this water body dominating the site. Rao was clear that this was a dock for small ships and boats that came via the riverine channels connected to the sea. While there has been some difference of opinion on whether this was a dock, with some suggesting that this could have been an irrigation tank, material excavated that included a series of heavy anchor stones has led most to agree with Rao's assessment. On the side of this dock is what is believed to be a warehouse, which is at an elevation. See, the site is spread over an area of roughly 20 to 22 hectare, which is quite big in fact. And only maybe you now, maybe one third of the site is excavated. So, we do not have much idea or the holistic idea about the site. But you know, when you look, look at the excavated evidence, it is quite clear that you know, the dockyard is located you know, close to the, to the river area. So, that is but natural. So, and next to the dockyard, when the dockyard was, ex was excavated, they did find the wharf, which is called the sloping platform, which you know, which is attached to the dockyard. And this type of structure is required, you know, for sliding goods up and down. So, that phase, you know, feature was there. It is not visible now, but if you look at the uh, photographs of the excavation, it is quite clear there. And then immediately close to that, maybe towards slightly towards you know the western side of the dockyard, we have the warehouse. It is open, open warehouse and uh, you know we have number of platforms, series of platforms. So, the goods could have been kept on the you know on these platforms. So, that is you now very close to the site and then you know as you move towards you know maybe northern and the slightly you now western part of the site then you come across you know maybe you know what SRO has called as the upper town or the citadel part which is not really very you know very uh, you know convincing. Probably you know the settlement was divided into two parts, but if you look at the evidence of citadel from Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, they have completely different evidence in fact. We do not have that kind of evidence in the so called citadel part of uh, Lothal, but then you know there is a settlement very close to that. And part of the settlement was used for the manufacturing purpose because towards the western part of the settlement, we have the uh, manufacturing activity in the form of the beautiful kiln, uh, which was uh, found in the excavation. And that kiln was used for firing the paste beads, that is quite clear. And then as you move towards north, you know, you find you know with the settlement extending, and that extended settlement is termed by SRO as the lower town. So, whether you know this uh, you know we are convincing about the uh, presence of upper town and lower town that is you know not clear, but it is clear that you know there is a settlement also you know by the site of the warehouse. And then uh, you know towards the west of the uh, settlement again uh, rather north west there is a burial ground and around that around the lower town and upper town. Uh, he found fortification wall. So, it was a properly fortified settlement and uh, it uh, conforms to the typical Harappan town planning that is found at other sites also. So, this is the evidence you know that he has found. So, definitely you know, people were living here and there were some people you know, who were involved in the manufacturing activities, maybe some mercantile activities and maybe some traders also were living here. In fact, you know he has a close to that kiln area, SRO also has identified the house of a merchant. Upper town has you know number of big buildings and the buildings are really you know they are very well made. If you look at the you know remains uh, that have been excavated that clearly gives idea. And what you know what uh, SRO has missed one important point there which I would like to mention here that uh, I have shown you that you know number of uh, uh, this uh, series of uh, drains or you know uh, you know rather outlets of the bathing platforms. Now, they are you know in a line. So, I suspect that you know there were number of rooms on the periphery of the city you know maybe citadel area or the upper town which were meant for the uh, maybe merchants coming from maybe 
from Persian you know region or even from Mesopotamia. So, they could have stayed there. So, that is what I, I feel that you know that area is very important and that needs to be properly investigated again. Excavations carried out here between 1955 and 1962 revealed a lot about the site of Lothal and it allows us to imagine how the port town's layout would have been and how it evolved. The site seems to have started off as a small village on the banks of the river. The presence of a naturally sheltered harbour and a rich hinterland beyond may have attracted the more urbane Harappans to come and settle here. In phase 1 of the settlement, around 2350 BCE, there is evidence of a flood that destroyed the village. This led to a rebuilding of the site in a more organised manner, with some of the classic Harappan planning styles coming in evidence, as a neatly laid out town emerged with civic amenities, clearly demarcated residential areas, wells and drainage. Phase 2 and 3 show the site of Lothal at its most prosperous. From this period, roughly till 2000 BCE, excavators have found a rich depository of ceramics and artefacts. The profusion of seals and the fact that a large hoard of ceilings was found from a single structure has led archaeologists to believe that this may have been a manufacturing unit of some kind in its heyday, around 2100 BCE. The site museum in Lothal gives us a glimpse of the everyday lives of the people who lived in this town. While Lothal was not as big as the sprawling cities like Mohenjo-daro and Dholavira, it was a busy commercial hub. A large profusion of games have also been found here. Excavators here also found a series of skeleton buried in the cemetery. This one stood out as it marked a double burial. Lothal, as like any other Harappan settlement, mostly the you know, Harappan cities or towns, Lothal also has a separate cemetery, which is roughly maybe you know 700 to 800 kilo, you know, meters away from the settlement. And uh, S. R. Rao had, had excavated this you know part of the cemetery, and he discovered nearly you know 20 you know burials. Uh, the burials found here are very much similar to the burials found at other Harappan sites. Because at other Harappan sites also we have separate symmetry, and you know people used to bury the dead bodies along with some goods. So we do find some burial goods also here also, like you know we find pots which must have contained food and water, their jewelry, their ornaments, and the tools also. So probably the Harappans believed in second life, and they thought that you know they need all these things you know which you know he was using when he was alive. So that is the evidence you know which is quite common. But there is one, you know, uh, double burial found here, and double burial, you know, before we start, you know, we excavated the site of, uh, of the cemetery at uh, Rakigadi, we thought that you know this is a unique burial, and S. R. Rao, in fact, had interpreted that uh, there is a male and female in that burial, and the, you know, he found some marks on on the head of the female, so he thought that female was intentionally killed and buried along with the man. But subsequently, you know, the scientific studies have not really confirmed that. And uh, uh, Kenneth Kennedy, who studied the physical remains, perhaps he, you know, he was doubtful whether these uh, marks were before the, you know, burial or after the burial or post burial. He was not clear about that. But uh, you know, we have found similar burial at uh, Rakigadi, and uh, I have interpreted that as a burial of, a, you know, of a male and female the relationship of which was legally accepted by the community because they were found in a common common symmetry and they were given the same treatment as they had given to other other individuals probably you now both of them died you know at the same time we don't know whether they were brother, brother and sister or they were husband and wife we do not know hints of a settlement and bones found here probably gave this site its name lothal which means the mound of the dead in Gujarati. Interestingly, the name Mohenjo-daro means the same in Sindh. By 2000 BCE, the site of Lothal began suffering a series of setbacks. In phase 4, around this time, there are signs of decline after a major flood seems to have occurred here. 
A second flood soon after 1900 seems to have spelled the ruin of the city. Interestingly, after the second flood and the destruction that followed, some people seem to have returned. But Lothal never really recovered. By phase five, there is a general decline. Manufacturing ended and there was a massive de-urbanization that saw the sites become a village. The floods in 1900 would have been part of the larger environmental or climatic disaster that led to the collapse of the large Harappan cities and the civilization as such. However, experts believe that in Saurashtra, communities moved south and generally the Harappan civilization survived a little longer till it finally merged into local cultures. This region is really not ideal for establishing, you know, you know, uh, artificial port here. There are no natural ports. Even for establishing arti artificial port, the area is not ideal because always, you know, you know, it has uh, suffered because of the vagaries of the climate and the sea level changes. So, uh, you know, it is quite possible that you know that at some stage the uh, this particular structure or the settlements may have been disturbed by maybe you know the incoming waves or the tidal effect also. Around 1900 BC or 2000 BC, the climate became dry and it has you know impact on the sea level also. The sea level, level has gone down, how much is not clear, but I mentioned the name you know the work of uh, Professor Meher from MS University. And he has scientifically established that you know, around 1900 BC, the sea level has gone down. And naturally, because this particular site must have fell into disuse, it may not, may not have continued as a dockyard or the port. And therefore, you know, it may have been abandoned after that, because the main function or the main purpose of establishing the site was to undertake the maritime trade. And because the sea level has receded, perhaps you know, it was not possible after 1900 BC to continue that activity and therefore, the site must have been deserted. And it is not ideal for undertaking agriculture because the land around is brackish and that cannot really support agriculture activity around the site of Lothal. And therefore, they must have gone in you know inner part of Saurashtra somewhere and established their settlements somewhere. The water that was the lifeline of the commercial center that Lothal became was also its curse. In fact, even now, the Gulf of Kambi is notorious for its tidal waves, known as boar tides. This along with the fact that there has been heavy silting in the mouth of the Sabarmati and the many rivers that drain into the sea here has ensured that there are no ports in the region even today. By the historic period itself, at the time when this map, the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, was made by Greco-Roman marina around the 1st century CE, the action had shifted to the port of Barigaza or Baruch with warnings to seafarers about the rough seas around the Gulf of Cambay. Over time, it moved further south to Surat, which was a hub all the way to modern times. But there is still a hint of the old Harappan world in this region, in the form of a goddess, Vahanvati Sikotarma, whose temples dot the region. This goddess has a strong connection to the island of Socotra in Yemen at the mouth of the Gulf of Aden. Because you know, Socotra was very, very important. Uh, the, uh, perhaps you know, Ro, uh, Lothal was directly connected to that region. And uh, the Harappans, you know, they probably you know, always uh, uh, you know, relied on the natural vagaries. So maybe you know because you know they wanted you know their travel to be smooth, the trade should not be disturbed. So they started worshiping the Sokotra Mata also, and then they have established probably you know even temples around. So before maybe uh, starting the voyage, probably the Harappans must have worshipped this uh, you know goddess, and then undertake the activities. So probably you know that uh, they started worshiping this uh, for the smooth sailing purpose and for the smooth conduct of the trade. There is a story that connects the goddess with the site of Lothal. According to S. R. Rao, who excavated the site, local labourers were upset when a shrine dedicated to Vahanvati Sikotari goddess was removed when this warehouse was excavated. 
a new shrine had to be made to placate them. Over 1,900 years after, it seems, the goddess of the ancient seafarers was still keeping a watchful eye over this Harappan port town.